Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is the part of my uh, one column tutorial where I take you from a centered page and we start adding some styles to it. One of the things that I did um, to get prepared is I found a banner graphic that I'm going to use for my website layout here. And this image is in my images folder. Let me just show you what it looks like right now. That's the image I'm going to use. I doctored it up a little bit. Uh, I, what I did is I made it so it faded into a solid color on the bottom, and I'm going to use that in just a moment. I also uh, have created a color palette. I took that picture, and I generated some colors where I pulled them right out of the picture itself. And I'm going to use these colors on the color palette to select some of my highlight colors for this presentation. And I really like that gray color around there, so I'm going to make heavy use of the gray as well, typically for text and things. Okay, so that's what I did. Um, one of the things that we did last time with my students, but I didn't record this on video, was I, I got some credits for the site. If you go down to the bottom of my page, and let me just, I think this is the one, close everything but that. Okay, I believe this is it, yep. At the bottom, I have a paragraph that has my copyright information however I also wanted to link to the source where this came from and it came from Wikimedia Commons they have a featured picture section and if we click on it it'll actually take us there so let's take a look at that real briefly and then we'll proceed to design so I'm actually just going to double click this here Go down to the bottom, I'm going to click on the link, and what it's going to do is it's going to open up that, that page where I got the information. And when you're on that site, on this particular link, if you scroll down, you're going to see a summary of you know, what, how, whether you can use this file or not, and what are the guidelines for that. So I was following those guidelines, making sure that you know I'm free to share remix. I just have to give credit. And the credit goes to um, this author, Dilif, or Dilif. I'm not sure how he pronounces it. There he is. So thank you, David. Oh, Ilif, that's an I. Uh, I get it, D Ilif. Okay, so anyways, that's David. He's a photographer. He did an awesome job on here. He said I can remix it. So I remixed it a little bit. Let's go back to that picture, which is this. This is a very large image. It's larger than I need. I like it large because we can play around with that. Okay, at this point, I think we're about ready to go. Okay, so I've opened this file up in Photoshop. However, if you go to pixlr.com, you can do the same technique online without having to pay lots of money or go to nefarious locations to try to you know, rip it off. Um, uh, this is our school licensing here. So one of the things I can do in, in Photoshop, but you can do it in other programs, is, and GIMP does this too, is you got an eyedropper tool. Eyedropper allows you to pull a color by clicking on the screen. So that gray color is this right here, and it tells us that the hexadecimal code is 27, 28, 23. It also gives us the RGB values if you want to make use of red, green, blue. Um, as a color code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the background color and I want to get uh, just find out all these different color codes. I'm going to get the background of the page and for that I have to actually open up the other file. So in Photoshop I'll try to open that up. Okay, like I said at the bottom of the banner if I were to get the eyedropper and I were to click this color that would be the background color of the page. Okay, and I would know that this banner would fade into that color and it would be seamless. You wouldn't really be able to tell when the image ended and the background color began. So that's the main color I'm going to do on the page. Now we're talking colors, and this could go in under typography, so it could go into the general style sheet. But in my case, I'm going to put this in the layout because it, it, re it relates to the layout itself. Um, there is no like absolute right or absolute wrong answer as to where you put the styles. If it relates to color, it could go under general or layout. Because I'm going to add it to my layout with the background image. I'm going to put it in my layout.css page. And let me just clone this 
So I have it in two views. And I knew that was going to happen. I'm going to move this to the other view. OK, so I want you to see the HTML on here. Notice we link to the layout style sheet third, after we've already linked to general and linked to navigation. OK, so on layout, we're going to set the body. I'm going to set the background color to be that color code I showed you. Background color and pound side paste. Oops. My laptop does that. Now, if you're going to set the background color, and I'm going to be putting an image in in, ju in just a moment, you should also set the color while you're at it. So I'm going to go back here, and I want to get the color off the palette. I'm thinking of getting that lighter color, or maybe the blue. I haven't decided yet. So we're going to try them both. So I just copy it off of there. Go back here, set the color. Always get in the habit of setting color and background color together. That way, if something happened to your image or whatever, it should still be good. Now I just got to find out where I have it. And hit refresh. That's not bad. That's readable. Okay, I'm going to see what the blue looks like. So I'm just going to test that one out. And what I might do is use one color for the headers, one color for the remaining items like paragraphs and lists and things like that. That's with the blue. One of the things you should do is if you're going to be setting background color, foreground color, is you might want to try the color contrast analyzer while you're at it. It's an online tool. It comes from colors on the web. I'll show you the results of that. Well, what do you know? I went to colorsontheweb.com slash colorcontrast.asp with that background color. And this text color, it passes triple A on large and small. I think I'm good to go. However, I want to go back to the previous color code I had, which is that E1. And it passes triple A on both. What's good about that is people who are color deficient will have enough contrast either way, which also allows me, let's save my changes, also allows me to mix and match the colors. So watch what I do here. I'm going to go back to where it was before. Hold on. I'm going to use that color there. And I'm going to style my... Now, see, here's the problem. Now I'm looking at this. I'm thinking this, maybe this should go under general because now I'm going to style my headers and paragraphs and things like that. So I apologize, but I'm actually going to cut it from layout and I'm going to paste it onto general. Sometimes you just make these decisions as you go. Hey. You know what? I make mistakes. Oh, look. I already had a body declaration here. I'm going to paste that there. And I'm just going to delete that line. So we still have it here. Let's style the headers. H1, comma, H2, comma, H3. I usually don't go beyond a header 3, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. And I'm going to set the color. Paste there. So when I save my changes, what happens? Because I applied this color to the body, that applies to all our tags. But then we do what's called an override. We pick a different, more specific tag. In this case, all of our headers, or at least through header three, and apply it the other color. The end result, when I hit refresh, is now I've got a mix of two colors. Okay. Okay. You pick your background colors and colors. You should check it through the color contrast analyzer. However, now let's do some layout. Let's use our banner graphic. Oh, one of the things uh, that's a really hot topic these days are what's called responsive websites. And now that we're going to smaller browsers and things like uh, cell phones, but we also have tablets, and then we have like uh, Android devices that are like somewhere in between a, a, a phone and a tablet, you know, the OneNote all that kind of stuff. We've got a lot of different sizes. And so you'll notice a lot of the more recent designs and websites is we have much larger text than we used to have. Now, I'm not going to go into responsive too much, but I just want to show you some of the newer styles of what's going on here. And so, for example, we have 20. And a lot of what you're seeing now is kind of a fuzzy background graphic with, you know, centered text 
What's nice about this is you can now see that if this were on a small cell phone, it would probably, it would probably be a little closer. Well, let's just show you what it looks like much smaller. Here, hold on a second. Now, notice what's happening here. It's kind of an interesting phenomena. As we go smaller, this gets a little smaller too. Okay, And as you get smaller, suddenly it starts changing. So if you're on a, a small cell phone and you're doing it portrait style, it might look like that. We're still using the background graphic, but you're not seeing all of it. Okay, And when we set the width here at 40 EMs and then a maximum width of 98, that was a kind of responsive technique. So that when we go smaller, we jump not to a width that's set in EMs, but we go into percentages, which is a more fluid design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my banner graphic and I'm going to make it fuzzy. I like that fuzziness. Um, and so you might want to play around with this. This is not so much about blurs, so I'm going to experiment with a few and choose one and run with it. I'm going to settle on the Gaussian blur with a radius of 3.0. I saved mine as banner 2. Dot jpeg and so we're going to go ahead and apply it to the background background and i'm going to use the background shortcut url is the location of our image and so the location is images background two okay so that's where we set the background we're going to set it to not repeat and we're going to put um, center, oops, not center, center top. So that's going to put it at the top, centered in the middle. And we're going to test that one out. And let's see what the web page now looks like. It helps to spell the name of the background correctly. It's banner two. Ah. Banner2.jpg. Ah, there it is. Oh, look, the blurred, it works, right? Okay, so the blurry, it kind of has that effect. However, look what happened. Our background color changed. We don't have that background color anymore. What happened? What went wrong? Okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to set the color in background as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this background color code is all, hold on, right there add it here. I don't think the order is so important. Save our changes. There it is. See that? So we got our background blurred part here. Um, everything is centered. We've got that in the middle. Okay. So one of the things we're going to want to do here is add some fonts, make it larger, maybe have one of those effects where everything is centered in the middle. So we'll try that. And on the header, we're going to try this, text align center. So we're going to center that text in the middle. F5 to refresh. There it is. So now my header is saved. I think this is a good time to add um, some fonts. Let's get the fonts looking better.